the bar is, is pretty high now with the expectations. And, and you look at the business and you say, well, wow, I mean, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to be too critical of AT&T, but I haven't been there that long. So I, I still, I, I like to think I have a bit of an outsider's view on things. We're kind of slow, right? Is anybody surprised at that? You know, we're we're, we're kind of slow in being able to react. Um, you know, we're a huge ship. It takes us a long time to turn. Uh, from an innovation standpoint, you know, we're used to kind of innovating at scale. These massive things that we, we attempt to do that may take years and years to actually deploy, uh, and then many others take advantage of it. And you know, in the past, we've obviously been the benefactors. Um, but with the speed with which technology is changing and the number of consumers that are participating, you know, we've got to figure out a model that allows us to continue to move forward and create opportunities, right? while not necessarily crowding out the others that are really kind of creating interest in that marketplace. The good news is that we now have so many people connecting, you know, whether it's a smartphone or on the internet, that now we're talking about, well, how do we get the stragglers, right? Uh, so you know, I think most of us in this room probably would have to classify ourselves as either early adopters or tech savvy, right? But you know, you got now folks like my father who's, who's got an iPhone. Right? And I keep telling him, you know, Dad, if you hit the screen any harder, you're going to punch your finger right through it. <laughs> okay? So, so it's, it's really not the people like you guys that are having the problems. Right? So clearly, there are challenges that we all have. But we kind of figure out ways you know, with our knowledge of how things work and you know, how do I create the integration myself. But my parents don't have a clue. Right? And you've got the people that don't spend their, their lives thinking about technology that have been drawn into this you know, sexy opportunity, right? it's actually creating problems. It's creating complexity. With all this activity now that's going on, right, uh, I think people are discovering that this freedom they have comes at a price. Right? The price could be my information that's being shared all over the place, or it could just be the burden uh, on me to deposit all of my data in each and every one of these websites that I want to do business with. Right? So if I want to actually bank online or I want to buy something from your retail location, I've got to go through the effort of entering the same doggone information I've entered in 50 other sites. Right? And over time, I begin to kind of get desensitized to it. Right? So oh, you need my social security number? OK, all right. You need my bank account number? OK, all right. I mean, honestly, I think you know, my parents have no idea just exactly what could happen with the data that they're putting on the web. And frankly, my, my wife? doesn't have a clue either, right? So she, she's constantly asking me, well, you know, I, I wanted to sign up to do this thing, and they were asking me for this piece of information. Is that OK for me to provide it? Right? It, it used to be that all of our personal information was locked in filing cabinets, right, that, that we, we had control over. Or it was some insurance agent that we knew by name, and we knew they had a filing cabinet that was locked up at night, right? So now we're depositing our information with all these people that we don't even know but we're doing it because we want the convenience of being able to interact online. Okay. And so what does that get me? Well, in order to protect this information, and I really don't know that this is protecting any information, I get the luxury of creating all these user IDs and passwords right? that my wife likes to try to manage through a series of multicolored post-it notes that live all over the office, and I think, you know, that the sticky stuff that's on the back of that post-it note, it lasts pretty long. Some of these won't stick to anything. So I'm really kind of wondering, how old are some of these user IDs and passwords? And, and there are no names on them, so I'm not sure she knows which site they belong to. Okay? So we, we, we're all trying to manage this, this world that we do not control. Okay? And of course, these experiences, they don't hang together. Right? So if I'm doing something on my PC at home, and then I go to the airport. Okay, I was searching for something, and I found a collection of things that looked kind of interesting. Oh, I'm going to miss my flight, run to the airport, pull out my smartphone that's supposed to be just like my computer. I can do just about anything. Well, where was that search? The search results, they're not there, right? The applications that I'm using on my PC, they don't really look like the applications I'm using on my mobile device, or vice versa. If I've actually created some data or I stored some data uh, on my mobile device it doesn't automatically become available through my PC or through my TV, right? 
So I'm basically having to create the integration myself. And again, the folks in this room, you guys have probably figured out there are other sites that you can go to and set up other accounts with other user IDs and passwords, right, that can kind of create these bridges, right? But the, the masses that are now joining this movement, they don't have the time, the inclination, or perhaps the skills to go figure this out, okay? So who's really in control? I know I'm not, all right? And I, I know a lot of people that are, are finding themselves in this world don't feel like they're in control, okay? They need somebody, some entity, someone they can trust that's trying to figure this out for them, okay? All right, so I know, I know today we've talked about some you know, relatively technical things and some specific areas uh, where we could you know, advance our ability to put advertisements in front of customers. And I'm a marketing guy, right? So I'm always trying to figure out, so why does my customer care? Right? What's in it for them? And at the end of the day, I think this whole discussion around personal data, uh, somebody made the comment of without trust, there's no commerce. Well, without trust, there's really no business opportunity for us, AT&T, in this problem space, right? So trust is kind of where it all starts. If, if we can establish a new relationship, kind of a, a digital agent relationship with our customer that says, all the work we're doing is about you, Right, the data we're collecting, the data we have access to, we're going to apply it first and foremost to create value for you. I think that's what opens up the door for the future opportunity. Right? It's, it's, it's not so much about the, the kind of incremental, sophisticated tools that we can use, that we absolutely need them. Right? So some of the things I'm going to talk about, we're going to need those tools, but that foundation has got to be that we continue to and build on this idea that we have your back, right? That we're actually looking at these basic problems you are trying to solve, and we become your agent to solve those problems, right? So when I think about you know, the, the role that AT&T can play, it's, it's a space in between all these applications and data, right? So we believe that we can present the customer with solutions that help to bend the technology around them rather than asking them to bend around the technology, okay? Go on here. Go on, one more. All right. So to, to make this happen, you know, we've got to draw on some of the capabilities that we currently have, some of the relationships that, that we've established. Uh, but ultimately, it's going to be about connectivity, kind of device agnostic connections. Doesn't matter, you know, what the device, the customer's got to be able to connect seamlessly, right? And whenever they connect, there's got to be a single identity that with it comes all your applications, all of your data, right, and experiences that are familiar to you, right? So we, we try to dumb this down for, uh, for, for our team and also for uh, our senior executives. You know, they're, they always ask me, like, what are the pillars, right? What are the basic principles of success? I say, okay, we'll create some pillars, right? So we created these pillars, right, that I'm going to talk to you guys about. All right. I'm not sure if there's a roof that sits on top of the pillars, but we got pillars. All right. So universal. All right. And we, I've got these series of vignettes, and I'll try to bounce through them relatively quickly. So um, you guys have probably heard uh, AT&T talking about uh, emerging device connections. Right. So we've got you know your basic mobile device. Right. That we manage. You know the number of subscriptions that we have there, and you know we're always compared with you know how Verizon's doing, how Sprint's doing, et cetera. Uh, but we're also investing a lot in an area we call emerging devices. So these are additional appliances, uh, consumer devices that are connecting to the internet, right? So in this scenario, we're talking about, you know, this is Bob, and Bob's very concerned about his health, right? So he's now in his mid-30s, and he doesn't quite have the, you know, the, the piss and vinegar that he used to have, all right? So he's deciding he's going to go acquire some of this new consumer equipment to try to improve upon his health, right? Okay, so he gets a sleep monitor, right, that's going to track the, the amount of actual sleep he's getting and how restful is that night of sleep, okay? All right, he's got a connected scale that's going to track the fluctuations in his weight from morning to night, day to day, week to week, all right? And he's got this intelligent refrigerator that's got the contents cataloged with the nutritional values, right? 
and he's going to collect it all together to create a profile of his personal health. Okay. All right, so where do we come in? Well, we're, we're not going to try to invent all of the appliances. We're not going to try to invent all of the devices. All right, but we are going to be the provider, or would like to be the provider, of that individual's identity, that seamless connectivity, so those protocols that allow those devices to easily connect, and the storage uh, and the information exchange that creates the home for all that data. Right? So that personal profile that is owned by the customer, that organizes their information for their personal use. Okay? And we'll talk a little bit more in another scenario about how we might use that data. All right, so from a personal standpoint, go on to the next. All right, so th this is, I think, very relevant to the conversation we were just having about, uh, about advertising, right? Um, we're, we're trying to, I think, crawl before we, before we get to the, the, the run stage. And we think there's really basic consumer behavior uh, with really basic information that we have at our disposal that we're just really not making use of, right? So if a consumer has our TV service, for example, right, and we have access to their behavior in terms of the shows that they're watching, uh, the things that they're recording on their DVR, uh, perhaps they're using our internet site as well, our UVerse Online, um, accumulating all that information together and ensuring that the very next time that you access the television, Right. We've already kind of sifted through and sorted out those things in the channel guide that you probably are not interested in. Right? So instead of having to page through that channel guide, right, I'm going to give you a smart view that takes into account the things that you're interested in, in viewing. Right? But when I include this information in the cloud, I begin to make it available to you wherever you connect. Right, so it's not just when I'm sitting in front of my TV, because it's not bound to the set-top box. It's actually an application and data that's in the cloud. Right? And that means I can take it with me wherever I go. All right. <coughs> go. There go. OK, open. Uh, th this is a tough one for, for AT&T. It really is a tough one. Uh, yesterday, we were talking about you know, being a horizontal provider of capabilities or you know, vertically integrated. And traditionally, we have tended to want to build all the way up to the customer and all the way back to the network. Right? As I said in the opening, it's really not a model that works. I mean, you can see where the innovation is occurring. And we need to allow the companies that are going to build better user experiences faster, we need to give them the runway to do that. All right? Which means we've got to build platforms that are not designed to be just for AT&T customers, but they've got to be for anyone that wants to participate. So what that means is um, if we have a, a, a personal data locker uh, in the cloud that doesn't require you to necessarily have AT&T service in order for you to have that data locker with us. Right? So also means that if you happen to be an AT&T subscriber with a data locker and you want to leave, right, you can keep that data locker. Right, so that's, that's a tough one for us to swallow, this whole idea that you know, I might actually allow my customers to leave with something that's of value without making sure that I hold on to everything they currently have. Right? So you might say, well, you know, in an old model, I'd say, gosh, you know, I'm going to keep you as a customer because now you've invested all this data with us. And that's going to keep you from ever dropping one of our other services. Well, by doing that, it basically shuts the door on other companies kind of interoperating with us, with our platform, and allowing for that free exchange of information that's going to be so important in this kind of personal data locker concept. The, the, the vignette I'm going to talk about here is really, uh, it, it, it flips things around a little bit to include the service provider as well as the consumer. Right? So I think one of the, the opportunities that we can present in, in this open environment is that smaller players that really aren't uh, really aren't kind of more or less uh, writing the rules of how things work in cyberspace, uh, can create very intimate relationships with customers where the customer has the control to, to kind of opt in, I, to, to use what you guys were talking about, but more to define the trusted relationships uh, that permit data to flow to a particular 
uh, particular merchant. So in this, in this vignette, uh, we have someone who's traveling, traveling to Seattle. Uh, he arrives, it's one o'clock, uh, it's four o'clock, he's from East Co the East Coast uh, time zone. It's four o'clock his time. Uh, he's way overdue for a cup of coffee, all right? His favorite coffee place is Pete's, all right? So when he shows up, because he's already established Pete's as a trusted relationship, right, he's going to allow Pete's coffee and tea near the, uh, near the office where he's, he's going to be working uh, to be notified that he's just arrived in Seattle, okay? Also know that it's, it's past my coffee time, all right, and I'm heading directly to the office. All right, so he's receptive to Pete saying, hey, interested in a cup of coffee? Your ETA is 45 minutes. All right, we'll have the latte waiting for you. Okay, now that's maybe an exaggeration, but if you think in terms of, if, I'm, if I've already established Pete's as one of my favorites, and I don't mind sharing some small amount of information about me, like I just landed in Seattle, right, and I'm en route, and I will be heading to this location, right, it's actually a value to me to have that double latte waiting, okay? All right, secure. So I think this is, uh, this is kind of the fear and uncertainty area that uh, we've spent a lot of time on internally, kind of talking about how, how we ensure that if, if we're going to be a, a broker of data, if we're going to provide somebody with their, their identity service, how is it we actually ensure that their data is secure, all right? And, and, and one of the most important things in, in really defining security from the customer standpoint is to ensure that they feel like they have control, but also that you can act on their behalf, right? And so that you can kind of close some of the gaps that don't require the burden to be on the customer to make all of the decisions. So in, in this vignette, we've got, you know, Bob, who's been trying to stay in shape. He's hurt his back uh, working out. So he's got all this personal data that he accumulated from his sleep monitor and from his refrigerator and his scale, right? He's allowed his physician to have access to his personal, personal health information. So when he goes to see his doctor, the doctor already has all that information available. He doesn't have to go through the 20 questions uh, to, answer, uh, to answer those very basic pieces of information. All right, so then the doctor is gonna send him to a physical therapist. Now the physical therapist is someone who might also get access to a subset of information, right? but not all of it, okay? The physical therapist also has the ability to supplement the data in, in Bob's records, right? And then the doctor is going to be able to see what, uh, uh, what, uh, what course of therapy uh, has been made available for Bob, okay? In, in the health space in particular, um, I, I know there's, a, in the World Economic Forum, we've we, we spent a decent amount of time kind of talking about some of the complexities there. Um, it, it, it's one that feels really ripe to me a, as an opportunity to even early on uh, to get some traction around personal data in the cloud because we've got you know, a lot of interest right now in uh, the money that's being spent in, in these you know, new healthcare programs. Um, but it's something that universally people, people feel, this is data that's gotta be private, it's gotta be secure, uh, but it's also right now incredibly antiquated, just the basic transmission of information uh, in a doctor visit between the insurance company, between the doctor, between the, the hospital, uh, pharmaceutical companies, et cetera. Um, so we're, we're investing uh, both on our enterprise side as well as on the consumer side to try to put some of the, the basic foundation pieces in place uh, to make some of this real. Uh, simple, uh, the, this, this particular scenario is, uh, is one that you probably would say, well, I, I think we have the ability to do this today. Uh, but I was reading some research recently that said um, about 70% of all of the photos and content that are saved on smartphones are never taken off the smartphones. Okay, so e even though probably all of you guys know how to actually get something off of your phone or off of a digital camera, the reality is, is the majority of the people aren't actually taking it off the, the, the phone or the camera. Okay, so in this vignette, you've got you know, Bob, who's with his family on vacation. Uh, they're, taking, they're taking digital photos. Uh, we have an intelligent service that basically moves moves all of those photos with tags on where they were taken, when they were taken, uh, who was in the photo, uh, and sends them to the cloud with the capability to automatically organize them into groups. And then with our, uh, with our social gateway, uh, gives them the ability to share these photos 
not by sending them, but by granting permission to the data locker where those photos reside. All right. So the way that we're going about building this is we, we started with a, a set of what we call cloud enablers. Right? So this was something we did about, um, oh, I guess about six months ago uh, to, to build this framework of all the components that we thought needed to be in place to deliver this kind of identity-centric uh, cloud experience for our customers. All right? And we actually have a number of projects underway that are actually going about building these elements. I couldn't include in the slides the actual things that we're going to build, but I'm going to tell you what we're going to build, but uh, I couldn't include them in the slides because we kind of like to uh, keep a lid on that. Um, the first thing that we are building and um, working with, uh, with, with Mark and, and Drummond and, and Kalia on some of these concepts is something we call Identity Manager. Uh, and it's basically an, an OIX, uh, 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 OpenID, uh, consistent foundation for identity, right? That can be pretty much any identity you want to pick. So you want to use the format for the user ID. You pick the format. Um, it, uh, it ultimately, if, if we get to the point where we have a single identity in cyberspace, uh, could be your key to get into any domain that's going to accept, accept that identity. Uh, initially, uh, you know, we've got a pretty big domain ourselves at AT&T. Uh, we're going to try to solve for it giving you access to all of the domains within AT&T. Uh, but it will be portable, one that you can actually take with you. Uh, built on top of that will be a digital locker. Uh, so storage capability uh, with uh, some, some services that are uh, very similar to what you saw there with the, uh, the, the digital camera, but other means of uh, pulling content off of your mobile device and creating settings that automatically load the contents to the cloud, uh, tag them, uh, catalog them, uh, organize them uh, and give you the ability to share them through, uh, through a, a couple of different means. Uh, it could be through your social network uh, or it could be through another capability we call live cards, which is kind of a, um, uh, again, it's an identity centric uh, view of an individual, which could be either a contact in your contact repository it could, or it could be your own. Uh, that. Uh, you can grant somebody through a live card uh, access to certain fields in your profile uh, and grant them access to contents in your locker. Right? So if I gave Drummond my live card, uh, and Drummond is a business associate of mine, and he, are, he and I are collaborating on some projects, uh, and I have stored you know, some, uh, some concept documents in a locker, uh, when Drummond wants to, to, to see, hey, what's going on with Vaughn, he can pull up my live card and he can see, well, there have been updates made to that, that locker file and he can go directly and see all those concept documents. He can also see, you know, if I allow him to, that I'm in, I'm in Santa Monica today um, and here's what my calendar looks like. Uh, he can also see the most recent uh, uh, text messaging string that we've had. Uh, so it's kind of a, a person-centric, uh, collection of you know, content, permissions, contact information. This is kind of a mapping of, like I said, I, I, I did this for, uh, for the executives in our company to try to show them how the different enablers actually come into play uh, when we're trying to, uh, to support a given scenario. So we get this little highlighting thing that we do to show them you know, if we're going to do personalized video, here are all the components that you have to, you have to actually light up to support it. Um, one thing you'll notice is kind of missing here is you know I don't have I don't have a particular icon for the personal data store, right? And that's really because the personal data store is kind of the result of almost every one of these services, right? So every one of these services pretty much is going to draw on the personal data store, and it's also going to deposit information in that store. Okay, so it's it's not not itself a a separate service. It's it's actually kind of a it's. Identity and the personal data store, kind of the Uber services here. All right. I guess my, my parting message here is that if you, if you can't tell, um, we're very serious about trying to make something happen in this space. Um, we have a lot to gain by advancing this particular pursuit. Um, 
I, I know that the crew here is thinking big. I mean, I was at the World Economic Forum a couple weeks ago. Uh, my head hurt uh, from, from all of the, the big brains in the room talking about uh, how complex this particular pursuit could be. Um, and at some point, I'm just not able to follow. <laughs> so uh, in my mind, you know, we may think big, but we have to start small. Uh, and we want to be a part of helping to move this thing forward. Uh, if nothing else, we're going to draw some attention around you know, you know, the way we're doing it. And presumably, we're going to build it in such a way that it can, it can jog left, it can jog right if we need to. Um, but we're going to put something out there that we can begin working with. Right? But it's imperative for us that we start taking these steps, because this is not a it's not a one year we you know put our shoulders to the grindstone and we're going to get this thing done. I mean this is going to be this is going to be a journey. But I feel in the next 24 months it's absolutely critical for us to have advanced the cause inside of AT&T and with our customer base. I mean with 100 million customers, you know we have the opportunity for this community to potentially seed a large group of people and get them moving in this direction. Right so. So my hope is that uh, you know after uh, after this session, if if you have if you have thoughts you'd like to share with me, uh, if you you know want to throw your your hat in the ring uh, with with some of the rest of us that are that are working on this stuff, um, uh, it's only going to work if we get the community kind of you know rallied around it, and it's going to be a, a bunch of I think kind of concurrent parallel paths of work. Um, we're not going to stop what we're doing. Um, but we're, we're hoping that we're going to have some additional cars that we can kind of hook up to the train uh, because we're going to quickly need it. All right, so I appreciate, uh, appreciate the time and uh, uh, look forward to questions. Thanks. Thank you very much.